Good morning. I'm Cooksey Bennett. I'm the lay leader here at Chapel Hill United Methodist Church. In today's devotion, I'm going to look at who Jesus is, the laying of the foundation of the church, and where we fit in it today. <clears throat> Let's open with a word of prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this day. We thank you for all that you, uh, you give us and allow us. Lord, we thank you for this technology today that even though we can't move, meet in groups in the church that we can still connect and still study your word and come together in your name. Lord, just ask you to be with us as we go through this and ask you to be with all the people that's uh, caring for the sick. And Lord, just be with our government leaders as they, uh, as they try to help steer us as a country through this. We ask this in Christ's name. Amen. If you have your Bible, we'll be reading Matthew 16, verses 13 through 19, and then Daniel 7, 13 and 14. And please share with everybody how to get here, chchurch.org, and then click on Daily Devotionals. Another thing I found is uh, when we watch this at home, that you can... Uh, team it up or sync it up if you have a smart TV and watch it on your on your TV which is a lot better than trying to watch it on the phone or a smaller iPad. So and you do the same thing with the Sunday's sermons. Matthew 16 verses 13 through 18. Peter's declaration about Jesus. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples who do people say that the Son of Man is? Well, they replied, some say John the Baptist, some say Elijah, others say Jeremiah, or one of the other prophets. And then he asked them, but to who, who do you say I am? Simon Peter answered, you are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. Jesus replied, you are Bless Simon, son of John, because my Father in heaven has revealed this to you. You did not learn this from any human being. Now I say to you that you are Peter, which means rock, and upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. Ever wonder where the title Son of Man comes from? The title Son of Man comes from Daniel 7, 13 and 14, where the Ancient of Days, God, gave to the one like a son of man dominion and glory and a kingdom that all the peoples, nations, and languages should serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion which shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed shall not be destroyed. His kingdom, Son of Man, the Messiah, the Son of the living God, the church. The timeline in Matthew 16 is very close to the crucifixion, the death of the Son of Man. The only person who knew this, of course, was the Son of Man, Jesus. So the Son of Man knows what lies ahead for himself, knows the pain he will endure, not just for himself, but for man, for you and I. In verse 18, Jesus says, Upon this rock I will build my church, and all the powers of hell will not conquer it. He knows what is about to happen to himself, and no matter what the devil tries to do, tries to get us to do, that nothing will bring down the church. Not man, not the devil, and certainly not this COVID-19 virus. This church, the church is built on a rock, on a good foundation. Yes, these are scary days we are in, but nothing compared to the low Jesus the Son of Man had on his plate, or has on his plate, Remember that in Daniel 7, 13 and 14, where God gave to the one a, 
like a son of man, dominion, glory, and a kingdom, that all the people, nations, and languages should serve him. Again, his dominion is an everlasting dominion, shall not pass away, and his kingdom that which shall not be destroyed. After this pandemic is over, the church will still be standing. And I think it will be stronger than ever. If we, man, allow it to. But let's take this time in history, and yes, we're in a very important time in history to take stock of our lives. What is important, what is not. How would the Son of Man answer our questions? How did this happen? Why is this happening? Why now? I think I need to change the things I do. Where are my priorities? Are they guiding me? Or am I guiding them? Why were we put on earth? It's real simple. To praise God, to be of glory to God, to serve God, to satisfy God, not ourselves. I invite you to study and read some more on these scriptures. Now I'm gonna do a little demonstration. Some of you have probably uh, seen this demonstration, but just follow with me for, for a minute. I've got just a bowl of water here. And for today's demonstration, we're going to put pepper in it. Okay? And the pepper is going to be representative of germs. So we can see them. The germs on everything we touch, right? So I'm going to take my finger of my left hand and I'm gonna stick it in the water. It's real simple. Watch what happens. All the pepper sticks to my finger. Okay. Take just a little bit of soap. Put on this finger. It represents washing our hands. Watch what happens germs run away from the soap. So let me wipe this off just a little bit. <clears throat> now this finger from the right hand, when we did this, it represents our washed hands. The germs ran away, right? When we wash our hands, not only does it wash the germs off, but it keeps the germs running away from our hands it is the same thing in our spiritual lives as well when we wash our heart when we immerse ourselves in the bible study the scriptures pray for the strength of the son of man and then evil will run away just like the pepper in the water let's keep both the germs and the devil away let's clean our hands and our hearts now, who do you say the Son of Man is? Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we just thank you for this time together again. Lord, just ask you to be with everyone till the next time we can be together. Amen.